Multiple sclerosis is a chronic demyelinating disease affecting the central nervous system. The name itself is short for multiple cerebrospinal sclerosis, which is given due to the multiple plaques that develop within the brain and spinal cord. The disease is characterised by demyelination, which means the loss of the myelin sheath and associated plaques in the central nervous system as a result of focal inflammation. The myelin sheath is the insulating sheath that surrounds axons of neurons and increases the rate of transmission of the electrical signals. As this myelin is lost and signalling is impaired, the symptoms appear. The exact reason this happens is not clear, but it is thought to be immune-mediated destruction or failure of oligodendrocytes, the myelin-producing cells. The demyelination is not constant, however. It is interrupted by periods of remyelination where some of the myelin sheath is restored, but it is not completely rebuilt. As this process is repeated, scar tissue forms along the axons known as plaques, which give the name sclerosis to the disease because of the hardening of the affected tissue. These further impair signalling and contribute to the neuronal dysfunction. Plaques are most commonly found in the white matter, particularly around small veins, but can affect anywhere within the central nervous system. More recently, it has been recognised that the grey matter can also be affected, and in some rare cases, also the peripheral nervous system. Normally, the blood-brain barrier prevents immune cells from reaching the central nervous system. However, in certain situations, such as after an infection, the blood-brain barrier can become injured and therefore more permeable and allow immune cells through it. This is known as the outside-in hypothesis, where CD4 T helper cells in particular are thought to mount an immune response against myelin through cross-reactivity leading to recruitment of other cells and development of an inflammatory reaction. More recently, it has been found that B cells and antibody production also play a role. The demyelination can happen on any neuron in the central nervous system, and so the presentation can be extremely varied. The typical presentations include motor deficits like weakness, spasticity or tremors, sensory disturbances like paresthesia or a loss of sensation, bulbar dysfunction like dysphasia, dysarthria and dysphagia, or even vision changes, especially central monocular vision loss or pain on ocular movement. Other features can include cognitive impairment, depression, anxiety and even urinary symptoms like urgency, incontinence or retention. Two features closely linked to multiple sclerosis are Utoff's phenomenon, where there is a deterioration in symptoms when exposed to high temperatures, and Lermite's sign, where there is a sensation of an electrical shock running down the back when the neck is flexed. Overall, four main phenotypes exist. It typically begins as a clinically isolated syndrome, with nearly half experiencing motor or sensory disturbances, 20% optic neuritis, 10% brainstem dysfunction, and around 20% a combination of the above. Those in this category do not fulfil the full criteria for a multiple sclerosis diagnosis, but up to 70% of these patients will go on to develop multiple sclerosis. Of the patients with clinically isolated syndrome who will go on to be diagnosed, 80% will have a relapsing remitting pattern characterised by unpredictable relapses with symptoms interspersed with long periods of no change. These deficits can resolve or may leave some residual deficits. A minority of patients will have progressing deficits from the onset with little to no relapse or remission periods. This is termed primary progressive multiple sclerosis. Secondary progressive is where patients initially have a relapsing, remitting course, but then change to have progression of disease between relapses. Around 65% of relapsing, remitting patients will go on to develop secondary progressive multiple sclerosis, 
most frequently after around 20 years. There are some other forms, including progressive relapsing, which is where there is a gradual deterioration from the onset that also features relapses, and fulminant multiple sclerosis, when there are multiple relapses and a rapid progression. Overall, the exact cause is not known, but it is thought to be a combination of environmental triggers and genetic susceptibility, with between 35 and 75% heritability. Up to 60% of the genetic variation is believed to come from differences in the human leukocyte antigen alleles, commonly known as HLA, on chromosome 6, which has been linked to autoimmune conditions like type 1 diabetes and lupus. Some alleles in particular are more associated. An affected family member increases the risk. If an identical twin has it, the other will also develop it in 30% of cases. And if an individual has an affected sibling or parent, then their chances are between 2 and 2.5%. Two and it's mostly diagnosed between the ages of 20 and 40, and is roughly 2 to 3 times as common in females than in males. Environmental risks include exposure to infections. One hypothesis is the hygiene hypothesis, where exposure to infective agents earlier on in life is protective, and the prevalence hypothesis, in which there is a persistent subclinical infection. Epstein-Barr virus particularly has been shown to increase the risk of multiple sclerosis as much as 32 times. Others are smoking and obesity during adolescence, and it has been shown that individuals who migrate during childhood assume the risk of the new region, with Northern Europe and America being particularly affected. No single test is definitive for multiple sclerosis, and it can be difficult to diagnose especially early on in the course. For a diagnosis, there must be dissemination in space, which means evidence of more than one area of the central nervous system having been damaged, and dissemination in time, which means that the damage has occurred at different points in time. The revised McDonald's criteria are the most commonly used tool to demonstrate dissemination in space and time and I will leave a link to the summary of the full criteria in the description. These include MRI findings and cerebrospinal fluid oligoclonal banding, which is a test looking for immunoglobulins within the central nervous system indicating inflammation, and is a test that is 80% positive in multiple sclerosis. No cure currently exists, and the focus is on reducing the disability burden of these patients measured mostly with the expanded disability status scale. The median survival rate is seven years shorter in patients with MS than the general population, and it is estimated that around one in ten of these with relapsing MS will require a walking aid within 17 years of the onset, while in primary progressive this time is only seven years, and from the onset of secondary progressive this is only five years. During acute attacks, the aim is to relieve the symptoms and regain function, mostly achieved by using intravenous corticosteroids. Then, once improved, the aim is to reduce the rate of further attacks and thereby reduce disability, achieved with disease-modifying drugs. For relapsing MS, particularly glatirima acetate, which is a mixture of synthetic polypeptides that may act as a ligand to the major histocompatibility complex molecules can reduce the risk of progression from a clinically isolated syndrome to multiple sclerosis. Interferon beta preparations are also first line, which modulate T and B cells, and therefore the inflammatory response. Other agents are first line in progressive MS, but may also be used in some relapsing cases. These include natalizumab, a monoclonal antibody, that inhibits addition of leukocytes to vascular endothelial cells and so reduces immune cells entering the CNS. Ocrelizumab, an anti-CD20 monoclonal antibody. Mitoxantrone, a chemotherapeutic immunomodulatory agent. Ziponimod and cladribine. In addition to pharmacotherapy, rehabilitation such as neurorehabilitation and occupational therapy play a key role in MS 
to help restore and preserve function.